within that one year, we have a lot of plans and like strengthening the embassy, strengthening the embassy. We want to strengthen our embassy because did you know? Point of information. Did, denied. Did you know that in Jordan, Uganda doesn't have an embassy? But still, people are being exported there to go and work. That's what you want to work on during this one year. We are not banning, but Point we are banning one year with a limitation. Grant. Yeah, you took, you're saying that you're not going to ban it. What exactly are you going to do? We are say, we're saying that... We are going to ban for one year. Then what is that? Is that banning or what? It's just resting the... We are resting it for one year. That's the punishment we want. Because we know the benefits you're getting, but we are not selling our people to the Middle East. That's it. The poor working conditions in the Middle East are what are forcing us to buy. Yeah? And about unemployment of our people in Uganda. The our people in Uganda, we can we can do what? We can in, we can incorporate them in a yoga. That's what you call those parish development models. During the course of the one year, we can incorporate them in those parish development models as we work on their exploitation for that one year. We are going to restrain, restrain, we are going to streamline and give licenses to able government reflected companies. Yeah, that are transporting our people during the course of the one year. We are stream, we are streamlining. And if it doesn't work out because these companies have already been given licenses and they have proven not to not work, then the government, only the government should be responsible for recruitment of workers to the Middle East so that it can be able to to look after them. The government can be able to look after them without trusting our people to companies that are irresponsible. At least it can be a government agent. There, mm -hmm. Uganda of recent has entered a memorandum with the UAE last month. We entered a memorandum with the UAE for our people's sake. So that's what we are going to be doing during the one year. We are going to seek market for country, for labor in countries with better working conditions. For example, Japan, Canada, and so many other countries. So that we don't depend on the Middle East alone. Because we can't we can't people to suffer. Second speaker from the negating side. Before I started my case, I am so very much just disappointed by what the second speaker from the affirmative side came and said. I'm, I'm rebutting the point she gave us. First, she was emphasizing something about one year, one year. You are telling us that you're banning something for, for one year and then you're going to resume it. Are you banning or you're suspending? No. Point two, you're talking of Canada, Canada, Canada with better working conditions compared to Middle East. But I wish to inform you that actually those countries are the ones with worse working conditions, the ones you want people to you want people to be taken to. Take an example of Middle East, it is an Islam based nation whereby these people believe in brotherhood and unification. This is taught in hierarchy. I expect you to know it. Two, whereby we see you're talking about poor working conditions in Middle East, but I want to inform you that the work that you're going to do is designed on the paper, which is called job description, according to business language. I want to inform you that actually, right. no, actually, when you see these people going out there, they are, they are given that job description whereby you're going to do this for this am amount of money at this specific period of time. That is what we are on. We don't you just take people out of the blue you and we are. tell no. Then I want to inform you that actually in the Middle East countries there is no much, a, much a, poor working conditions. Why? If you see a maid, a maid there, if you take it to Ugandan currencies, earning like 800,000, take, take Uganda, whether we have even less than uh, 150,000. Take an example of Tororo Cement Saga, whereby people are working for only 5,000 shillings. Is that good working condition? P.O.I. No. Yes. No. Then we are moving on. You talked of modern slavery, how organs are going to be taken away from people in the Middle East, but I want to inform you that African tradition talks of human sacrifice. It is there. This is Africa. What are you talking about when you tell us that when you go to the Middle East, your organs will be stolen, blah, blah, blah. That is wrong. Point no, two. I, I, not granted. Point two, I want to inform you. 
can find the budgets of the country because of these low, low taxes that you're, you're giving us a yes for, for burning the by exports, which also uh, another thing I can do as I can do, I want to give say that my side means because I think that people have to get what to do. People will need to get money, people will need to fund their families to, to, so that the country can be. This will even have to promote industrialization because people are going to get money from those countries and they are going to come here and, and do that industry. Well, and of course, they will, they will of course be promoting the labor here in Uganda, but if it refuse them to go, where are you going to, where do you expect them to get from the money? Thank you very much. We thank the speaker for that fine speech. We will come the government week.
exporting coffee and then and then that great city that embassies will fail in the, in, in, at the end of the day. They come and say that these people will go back to the Middle East and come back and invest in the country. But it's not that the nature of people who are exported to the Middle East. It's not these people are people who are uh, exported as as experts, who are exported as maids, who are exported as drivers. So what we want to tell me that these people, these person that are going to spoil their phones is drop out, right? This person who, who doesn't have this business mind is actually going to come back and invest I, I, I'm pretty sure that. That means even they are still willing to have this book working with us. So I, I make sure my case with all that said, and I believe that the negative team has won this case. Thank you. Reply speech. <laughs> Resolve this also violate the export to the Middle East. Now, first of all, uh, this debate has been all about employment versus unemployment as our analysis. Because we see that, first of all, if human rights are violated, as these people are telling us, then why are still people sneaking and smuggling outside of Uganda to go to these countries? We, we taught them that we see that these people have a high chance of benefiting just because of the principle of marginal difference that we taught them. And so, according to our analysis, they said they'll create a sustainable economy to Uganda, but we told them this will fail because we see that these taxes that uh, we receive will be cut short, and so we'll not get them anymore just because this relationship has been cut off. And then they talk about alternate, alternation employment opportunities in Uganda. But we, we, we ask them, which job will they, uh, will, will, they, uh, will they put in place? And then uh, we, told, we told them that this has actually happened just because of unemployment in Uganda. And that is the reason as why these people are opting to go for these uh, labor export. And then uh, they talk about lack of employment in Uganda. So they go to earn money. They, which they said in that first speech. So they are siding with us that these people actually go just because of unemployment in Uganda, which we told them that it is due to very many reasons. Well, we see that you as the government are actually employing even uh, people from outside countries and then failing to employ your fellow natives, which uh, she, they come and tell us in that third speech that this is actually uh, we are seeing Ugandans going and then leaving the investments in Uganda just for us. But we told them that actually this is actually not going to work. And then they talk about social cohesion, which we told them that this actually happens in Uganda just because of very many factors such as tribalism in Uganda. So it is not uh, uh, it is not just abnormal but it's normal even in our own country and then uh, we also told them that we also told them that uh, Uganda they tell us that Uganda as the government should consult these uh, companies or these 
uh, these countries to see that they can uh, compensate what has been lost or their effort to these countries. But we told them, we told them that. Okay. Thank you. Moving on. Once again, I'm Nanji Astrid for the Affirmative. First of all, our previous speaker came here and lied to us. He said that when something gets broken, you fix it, you do not throw it away. When you fix a mirror, how many reflections do you get? Is it the original mirror you had? Stop lying to us, much more research before you tell us that thing. Then these people were like, the few people that, the people that come back, okay, those that come back, what about those that have remained there? You're not talking about, we are talking about Uganda at large. We are talking about all the labor we are taking outside. Why are you only bringing a few that are able to come back? We are also talking about those those few that are left there that are dying from there. Yes, then again, they're talking about unemployment still continuing uh, because we are we shall uh, we shall cause unemployment because we are uh, you know refusing labor export to the Middle East. But you know unemployment is actually happening. First of all, this exploitation of labor to the Middle East is actually making people lazy. They are not getting to work hard. Because they know at the end of it all, they will go abroad. They do not need a lot of qualifications. So let these people come here. We already told you in our action plan that we're actually going to work with the government and other bodies to absorb these people into the employment sector. Our third speaker clearly told you that there's a lot of entrepreneurship in our country. Why are you guys giving us headache? Can you just please listen? And then again, the third speaker continued to lie to us that um, um, this house Mm. Uh, they are telling us about um, uh, the labor, the people being taken out as labor, being um, controlled, like you know, being um, given peaceful conditions of working. But are you really sure? They are only basing on the Ugandan constitution. They have not said anything to do with the Middle East constitution. Do you have any law? Any Anything, anything like an organization in Middle East to protect our people you're taking out outside there. So please, you need to think about all these people before you just single out a few. It seems that you guys are just opportunists. You just care about the money. We care about everyone. Conclusively, I'd like to tell you that we still believe that this house will ban labor export to the Middle East. Alright. That should be it. I will kindly ask for a few minutes to do some deliberation and then I will be back in a minute with your rankings and feedback. Sounds good? Right. That it is a line that you want on basis of not colliding with individual specific and like take your people. Pardon? Do you believe that every right has a responsibility? Okay, look, this is how it works. In every setting, right to are put that if a right goes beyond where it is supposed to be. For example, if you go for hate speech, we do not stand with you in this debate. We are talking about for that greater good. Because ideas that are being Thank shared or being moved is what creates the whole, uh, the whole analogy to do with the basic and provisions to the government. Second of all, uh, to avoid uh, problems uh, of rights being taken away. In a world whereby we fail to protect this panel, we will understand that if it is not open, governments have the capacity to, uh, to take away this. And as it has already been a citizen in the social media, you see that people are limited from airing out facts. People are, are, are limited from telling people the truth that you stole this, you embezzled this with concrete evidence. People are taken away on that ground and it is not granted. So you might be offended because they talked about the fact as long as it is falling through its limit, it means that we want that and it is so good for the community. If it brings at the end of the day an impact that is beneficial and vital for the development of the society, we think we tend to stand with it in this debate. So we do not call for anything outside of that document. Thing that what we are trying to do is 
trying to refer to you is that someone can open is open to air out their opinion air out their opinion regardless of the frontiers and regardless of of human rights sorry in that one is allowed to hold their opinion on anything without interference from public authority and regardless of frontiers. This expression we are talking about currently, Honorable Judge, it is not absolute. We are seeing it in limited or in the minority groups such as the women. Honorable Judge, the question in today's debate is, should it be absolute or should it have a limit? And by absolute we mean, should it be should there, no, should there be no limit, as in everyone can express themselves the way they want? But since the opposition has come up and they are trying to conquer, they are trying to debate the motion on our cause, on our on the our side of the question. Because if they are taking the absoluteness, that means since it is freedom of expression, someone is free to express their rights because it is a right, and they are supposed to express how they. Team opposition, team opposition comes up and they are telling us they are. To make sure that everybody coming to speak, uh, everybody coming to speak out should have a proof of what you're speaking about. It should be the right thing to do, not just having any freedom to blabber out things in the world. That is our plan. But now the current speaker came and talked about a democratic government. Okay, we have a good example. Uganda is one of it. Whereby we vote, it is true we vote. But then, how do we protect the? How do we protect? freedom of expression, whereby even now Uganda, which is protected by the constitution, they are still violated by the police. We have demo democracy, which is allowing people to vote freely and allowing people to speak anything they want. This is invoking violence in the people. This is why we gave an example of the Rwandan genocide, which happened, and reports were there yesterday. See the example by the tribes that were what that we are riving each other one way to the right door and say we should wipe out the cockroaches. Whereby in just 100 days they recorded over 8,000 deaths. Then in that case, are we really supposed to protect the freedom of expression? That is something senseless according to me. Two, you talked about liberty of the nation, but then you're talking of liberty of the nation. This is why I'm referring to the religious that I think it is answered. You talked of gaining rights. You can never tell me you are protecting rights of a person, a person where many people are dying. Then right. what about their rights? Not rejected. We are looking into reputation. You say that why should you think about your reputation when you know you're doing the right thing? I want to let you know that actually the plan and the main goal of the opposition of a country is to speak against that. You can never tell me that Bowen is going to be in line with Museveni. This is evidently seen. When we see, because of the freedom of expression, we are seeing corruption gripping into the country. How is corruption evident in this country? We have no Mao, who was the president of DP, now we are seeing this man on the side of Museveni. How did that happen? It is a big, big, big symbol of corruption behind alleged. It's not proven. Now, I want to inform you, you talked of building good reputation, but let me tell you, according to him and the scriptures, Jesus who came to save the world had enemies. People are speaking against him. So I really don't know what you are talking yeah. about when you say that. Right. Allow me to go into my case. I think I've answered all your questions. I will answer your yes. Preventing harm. This is what I said about violence. We are going to prevent harm if we censure the freedom of expression. We are going to be promoting, because this freedom of expression is promoting civility where we shall have a very toxic and uncivil society where people speak against each other. People don't want a, take an example of Rwanda where we have the Hutus and Jesus. Well, those, those two, two, two races, they can never meet. Why? They have a freedom to express their hatred against each other. This is a toxic society which is uncalled for in Africa where we believe in oneness and togetherness for a developing economy. Allow me to proceed to promoting debate and dialogue. Take an example of freedom of expression that happened in the parliament of Uganda. MPs were fighting. This is something unprofessional and unbelievable. Let's check into the history where 
number or leg that leg turn over the leader you need on the walls of the parliament is that something that also needs to be protected that is the reason why we are saying we should censor we should censor thank you